D-Stacks beat? Yeah, I got a D-Stacks beat. Listen to the beat, y'all. Come on, D-Stacks. Bring it in. This is Latavia here, and I have my lovely Aunt Valerie on with me today. Hey, Auntie. Hey, Nisi. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing? I am blessed and highly favored. That is great. That is great. So today I brought you on to talk about your cancer journey. Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. Let's roll. Can you tell us a little bit about your cancer journey and what was it like? Well, only thing I can say is that every woman and male should be examined yearly for cancer. And I will tell you where my journey started because, you know, the side effects that people normally have, my body didn't do that. And in fact, if it wasn't for my primary care doctor, the cancer would have gone unnoticed. So I went for my GYN appointment, which I do every year. And every year they tell me no problems. Every year they take a biopsy and they do the pap test. And every year they tell me it's no problem. Everything is fine. However, prior to going to my GYN doctor, I had went to my primary care doctor because I was suffering with pain in my abdomen from hernias. And that's where the um, primary care doctor decided to do an MRI. And when he got the results back, he said he did not like the way it looked. So that started my journey. He um, told me to go to my GYN 
doctor. I went there. She said everything was fine. But because of the MRI, my doctor said he didn't like it. And he got in touch with the GYN doctor's supervisor. And from that, they decided to do an endoscopy. And they went further up inside the uterus. And lo and behold, that's where they found the cancer. Wow. That's definitely deep. So... When you got the news that it was cancer, how did you feel? What was that like? When the doctor told me that it was cancer, I just couldn't say anything. You know, you'd be stunned. You know, you don't know whether to cry or whether to sit there. But I know that my faith is in God. And the doctor was surprised because I didn't break out in tears. I didn't ask any questions. And she said, Miss Blandon, did you hear what I said? And I said, yes, I heard you. She said, I said, you have cancer and it's in stage four. I said, I heard you. She said, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't look good. And I repeated to her again, I heard you. She said, well, I must say you're taking it very well. And I said, that's because I know a God who is able to heal my body. Right. And I have a relationship with God that I know he will hear me and answer my prayer. Right. So, of course, I had to start the chemo right away. Let me tell you, people, the journey with the chemo. Chemo can be wicked. It can be very wicked. The side effects. I was blessed. I'll say the first four chemos, I really didn't have nausea. I didn't get sick. None of that. But on the second chemo that I took, what happened was my dreadlocks fell out. And I was upset about that. I really was. In fact, I actually sat and cried about it. And even thinking about it now, it upsets because my hair was down my back. It was beautiful. And for me now to be bald, it hurt me, you know. But it's either the hair goes or you die. So what you going to do? I had to take the chemo. And so I started the chemo journey. I had taken four sets of the chemo, and then on the fifth set of the chemo, I had an allergic reaction, and they could not give me any more. So at this point now, I'm just trusting God to do what he said he would do, because I refused the radiation. I asked my doctor, I said, if there's no more cancer, why would I want to take the radiation? So I said, is there another way we can go? And she said, well, you can come back to me in three months. If we find no cancer, then, you know, we'll continue for another three months. You know, that's how we said we would do it. Okay. But in hindsight, listening to other people that have experienced this already, I'm thinking to take the radiation after the third month. And so we'll see where the journey takes us from there. But I want to let people know that in having cancer, you really have to change the way you eat. It can be very costly. And now we're talking about organic foods. I am not a rich person. And so for me, financially, buying organic food was very costly, but I knew that I had to do it. I thank God for my sister and my niece who were helping me sometimes buying the food as we went along on this journey. Not only do you have to buy the foods, but you have to juice the vegetables. I thank God for my sister, although she got on my nerves sometimes. Okay, but I have to say, I thank God for her juicing for me. And in fact, she is still juicing for me. The juices that she juices are all organic vegetables. I will tell you, like she juices the cabbage, which she says kills the stem cells of the cancer. So that is something that people with cancer should automatically begin to juice and drink. Who would have thought that cabbage has such powerful nutrients in it that it could kill the stem cells of the cancer? And then the green juices are very important. I don't know what exactly my sister mixed together to get the green juice. So she would have to come on and tell you. So surprise, y'all. My lovely mom is here to talk about what type of juices she juiced for my aunt through her cancer journey. Hi, so I use something called the Gearson therapy. And with the Gearson therapy, you had to drink eight glasses of carrot and apple juice per day. And you had to drink four glasses of green juices per day. And the green juice consists of green apple, red cabbage, Swiss chard, endive, or lettuce, and you drink four of them per day. In the morning, you started your day with eight ounce of orange juice, and then throughout the day, 
you drank these juices to flood the body with nutrients so that cancer could not in- survive in an unhealthy environment. So these are the juices that I use for my sister. Also, too, I also found out that the white cabbage or either the red cabbage, we juice that. And I found out that that also killed cancer stem cells. So we have to look at many times vegetables and fruits that are um, healthy for us and can put our body back into a, a healthy state. So those are the juices that I use for my sister. And today she's still drinking them. Great, Mom. Thanks for that great information. You just dropped some gems on us. I really appreciate it. Gems Gems were just just dropped. dropped. And guys, if you know someone who may have cancer or may be going through their cancer journey, I strongly suggest that you try it because it worked really well for my aunt. But Auntie, we got to backtrack a bit. I want to talk about how was the chemotherapy? Did you experience any side effects? Are you still experiencing some? Can you talk more about that experience? I really didn't get side effects. I was blessed. I'm going to tell you because I've seen some people where they're throwing up their guts. Okay. Um, They can't eat. You know, some of them get to the place they can't walk. I did not experience any of that until the fifth chemo session. It was after that chemo session that I began to have problems with my feet. The doctors said it's the side effects of the chemo where you get neuropathy. And it actually got to the place because I'm the type of person I like to walk. I like to do walking. And when I saw that I was not able to walk a block because the pain in my feet would be so bad that I just couldn't make it a block. I ordered myself a mobility chair. The doctor had said he could get me a wheelchair, but I don't want to ride around with a wheelchair that is heavy in the back of my car. So I got what they call a mobility chair. That mobility chair allows me to sit in it when my feet are bothering me or if they should start hurting or say like if I take the kids to an amusement park, you know, that involves a lot of walking. And sometimes you can't get a rented chair in the amusement park. So I take my mobility chair with me and that assists me with walking distance. When I get to the place that I can no longer walk, I have the chair. So that's what I found has been a problem for me. Even after the chemo, I'm still going through. And then there's other little things like you might have periodically itching or your skin might break out for no reason. You know, you might get pains in your legs. I mean, there's different side effects, but thank God, minds are not really serious, but some people really have it bad with chemo. And as I stated, chemo can be very wicked. To date, even though the doctors gave me uh, medication for the neuropathy, I really have not had to take it. I only had to take it one time. I haven't taken it since. So I'm dealing with it. And as my body gets stronger and get used to not being on the chemo, it's, you know, it's less and less, less and less side effects. Well, that's great, auntie. I'm glad to hear you on the men. What did the neuropathy feel like? Well, boy. Well, the neuropathy feels like somebody's putting pins and needles just sticking you in your feet. That's what it feels like. You also have this thing where it feels like underneath the ball of your foot, it has like a spasm. And when that happens, you can't drive, you can't walk. Even to sit, you still feel that pain in your foot because up underneath the ball of your foot, it actually gets into a knot. And at that point, you have to massage the foot for it to release itself. And that can be very painful. Wow. 
Wow. I know it had to be a bit of an adjustment to be able to do everything. And now sometimes it was hard to do certain things. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Sometimes after taking chemo, you might be a little tired. I didn't want to walk up and down the stairs, but unfortunately my home is nothing but stairs. So I have no choice but to walk up and down stairs. And for me, that was my exercise. My skin has been, it hasn't been its normal self. It's It's like you get these bumps, you know, but they don't feel like regular bumps, you know. Okay, I'll I'll give you a good example. This may sound crazy. You ever seen a chicken wing? Yeah. And you look at the chicken wing, it got all that hair on it Mm -hmm. underneath where the hair goes. You see all these little bumpy things where the hair is in it. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems as though the follicles of your skin is protruding out and it feels rough and bumpy. And I had to call the doctor yesterday and ask him for some cream. And he said that could be the side effects of the chemo. So chemo has so many different side effects and they all don't come out at the same time. Um, Some of the side effects come out later than others, but I'm just grateful to be alive. And I want to say this too. If you're on a journey, with cancer. It's good to follow what the doctor says and do the juicing and everything. But I want to say to those people that are out there and they're on this journey with cancer, I don't know who you believe in, who you pray to, but me as a minister, I pray to Jehovah God, Yahweh, Yeshua. I pray to him. And when I go to him in prayer, I'm believing in faith that he is going to do the work. And when you believe and believe him to do the work and work the tools that the doctors have given you, I believe that God will answer the prayer. Whatever higher power you believe in, I believe in faith that he will answer prayer. So it's very important important to incorporate prayer into what you're doing. I want to say I was on a lot of prayer lines. I have friends that are on a lot of prayer lines and I had people all around the world praying for me. And I believe that all of that had a factor in my healing. Even the doctor said she has never seen anything like what happened with me and how I'm doing so well. I was told that I had stage four cancer. I was told that I would probably have a colostomy bag because according to them, when they did the uh, CAT scan, they saw cancer on my kidneys. They saw cancer on my colon. They saw cancer on my intestines. They saw cancer on my liver. They saw cancer just about everywhere. And according to the doctor, I was supposed to have a colostomy bag. They was going to have to take a piece of my liver. One of my kidneys probably would have to go. It was just nothing good. I can tell you that. And so when they got inside and saw that there was no cancer in the places where the CAT scan was showing, they were shocked. I was even told they probably would have to close me back up. And so I thank God every day of my life that I live. And then it didn't stop there. (laughs) Wouldn't you know that when I went back to the doctors, they told me they found another cancer that was in stage two. And that cancer was very rare. So that's the cancer that I have to keep going back now for them to check. So I'm just believing that I am here. That's what I believe. I definitely agree. A lot of people that I know and things that I heard people say, you know, you have to hold on to your faith, catch hold of faith and believe in something and keep living every day. That's how they get through their cancer journey. So I can definitely understand that, Auntie. I definitely understand that. Mm -hmm. Did you like mentally struggle with it? Was it like hard for you in the beginning? Okay, so stage four didn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was when she said to me, we're going to have to take a kidney. Right. You're going to have to have a colostomy bag and we may have to close you up when we get inside because of all the cancer that we're seeing on your organs. Mm-hmm. That bothered me. And I had said I wasn't going to say anything to my family because I don't want to worry anybody. You know, we're all appointed a time to come into the world and we're appointed a time to exit. And if that was my time, I didn't want to worry anybody. I didn't want to stress anybody, you know, and my children were already going through it enough just Mm -hmm. dealing with the fact that I had it. I mean, my son used to be balled up in a knot downstairs in a fetal position, just laying there like crying. And I would walk in and I would know he was crying as well as the patient. It takes a lot 
you know, and to see your family member dropping weight. I mean, I had dropped weight so quick, 15, 20 pounds in a week, you know, and even the doctors were concerned about the weight loss, but this is the wickedness of chemo. It mm -hmm. will make you lose weight like no tomorrow. You know, so to see your family going through what they're going through, it kind of hurt me. And I didn't want my family to really be involved but so much. You right. know, although you're not going to stop my sister because she <laughs> she's going to find out whatever she needs to find out. Yeah, my, like mom, a pit bull. my mom has like an honorary doctorate degree at this point in medical stuff. So and I agree with you, Auntie. I think when, you know, a family member has cancer, it takes a toll on everyone. It's not just the person yes. dealing with the cancer. It does take a toll on everyone. And I'm not going to lie, that used to get on my nerves when you tried to hide the information and didn't tell us. I was like, I'd rather she tell us than keep it a secret because I want to know everything. I want to be able to help. I definitely understand your thought process and like, you know, trying to protect us. But mm -hmm. that was frustrating for me. I was like, I want to know because I want to help, you know. I want to be there to support you. So it's always that difficult, delicate balance. You know, you want to be there to support them, but you also know that they kind of have to take time to process it and go through the journey as well. Yes, it is. And let's not forget that we lost our mother last year. We lost our brother this year. So it was so much going on. I didn't want to put any more on the film. Yeah, I definitely understand that. When my aunt says that, you know, the cancer went to the kidneys and they said that she was going to need a colostomy bag, that just means that the cancer metastasized. So it went to other parts of the body than where it was originally. So because what it was supposed to look like, it definitely did not turn out anything like it. So everything, faith. God, the juicing, and us supporting her is what got her to this point. And thankfully, Auntie, would you like to share the news? Say I'm cancer-free. I'm happy about that. I still have to go back every three months to be monitored. And as I stated, I'm contemplating taking the radiation, although I really don't want to take it. But if everything keeps looking good, every time I go back, I'm not going to take it. So I thank God for, for everything. And I thank God for this podcast. And I want to tell the people out there that's going through cancer, it's not over until our creator says it's over. And so keep the faith. One thing I have learned, cancer is caused by stress and the way we eat. You have to leave red meat alone, hamburger meat, steak, all those good things that we love to eat. I love me a good T-bone steak. Had to leave all of that alone. You have to stop with the sugar. No more sugar. Okay, I do use a guave every now and then, but I use that in place of the sugar. And, you know, we have to eat more healthier, fresh vegetables. I have a little garden out in my backyard where I grow my green peppers and things like that, tomatoes, so that it's I don't have to buy everything in the store. So you might want to think about 
growing your own indoor or outdoor garden. So, you know, think about it. Just think about it. We look for different kinds of ways to help eliminate the costs of things. And let's not forget the Cancer Society. There's a woman there that helped me a lot. She even went to my appointment. And I thank God for her, a sister Carrie. She went with me on those appointments. She asked the questions that I didn't know how to answer. And I want to give a shout out to Albert Einstein, the Montefiore group from Albert Einstein. They have a team of workers. You don't have to go out of the state to get a good cancer team. They have a good cancer team there that has had great success with the things that they do to help people fight cancer. Yeah, I think I would second that. And I would say that, you know, trying to beat cancer or overcome it, I think it's a whole lifestyle change, right? You have to change the way you eat, change your outlook on life. You have to hold on to your faith. So it's a whole lifestyle change and it could be a lot coming at you so fast. But take it in small doses, take it in stride and you will definitely beat cancer. It and my matter. hair is growing back, Nisi. You see it? It's growing uh, back. It's growing back, everyone. It's growing <laughs> back. I'm super excited for her. I love it. So cancer is definitely not a death sentence today. You can definitely beat it. You got a D-Stack speed? You got a D-Stack speed? You got a D-Stack speed? time for the quote of the episode take it away auntie i stand on hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and i think that just encompasses this whole episode as a whole right it may look like something but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to turn out like that if you hold on to your faith and you believe everything will work out So thank you so much, Auntie, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Not a problem, DC, anytime. And I hope and pray that this podcast has helped someone. If you want to find out about the juicing, you can get in touch with Latavia and she will have her mom contact you or she will give you the information to her mom. And believe me, this woman has helped quite a few people in the juicing. They are doing well also. So if you want more about the juicing information, you can contact Latavia and she will put you in contact with her mother and she will give you all the information about the juicing and how it works. Yes, I definitely will give you all the information. You guys can reach me at queensontheroad.podcast at gmail.com. Again, my email is queensontheroad.podcast at gmail.com. And you guys have been amazing. Any questions you may have for me, please send it to the email. Any questions you may have for my mom about the juicing, please send it to the email. And if you would continue to like to donate to Queens on the Road podcast, I have my Patreon account up there. There's four different tiers for you to choose from. Please, please, if you wish, please support the podcast. Again, Auntie, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Nisi. Thank you, everyone, for listening, subscribing, sharing. Please subscribe to my Instagram, my Facebook, my YouTube channel. Again, thank you guys so much. And see you next week. Bye, Auntie. Bye-bye, and bye, everyone out there. We're rolling out.